Hello there, just a quick announcement before the video starts. In the description box, you'll always find the links and names to whatever apps or hardware that I'm featuring inside the video. So I will no longer answer questions asking me about those things. Just open up the description box and there you'll have it. Hello and welcome to Hack Attack. My name is Jakob Hack, I'm your host and you're watching a Hack Attack episode. So we're going to go into how much power an iDevice can actually give out together with an older CCK, the camera connection kit from Apple. It's an expensive, ugly looking little device that we can use to connect our external USB stuff with. It might be cameras, it might be microphones, USB mixers, MIDI controllers, sound interfaces, you know, there's there's a lot of things out there that we like to connect to our one and only lightning port. And that's a constant problem when you're using the CCK, since it will fill up the only port you have, giving you no ability to actually charge your iDevice at the same time. So whatever USB device you're connecting like this will pull all of its power from your iDevice. I've made videos about connection errors and, you know, multiple USB devices with iOS before. And one question I get asked a whole lot is why do I need a powered hub? Well, simply because the iDevices are limited to give out about 180 milliamps before everything starts shutting down. That's right, when you reach a certain amount of amps, of milliamps, current being drawn from your system, well, stuff will just shut down. And so how do I know it's 180 milliamps? Well, I'm gonna show you a clip from a testing I did where I connected multiple USB devices through an unpowered USB hub connected to the CCK, connected to the iDevice. See, I was trying to intentionally kill the session by drawing too much current from the system. So I'm gonna disconnect this, remove this and unplug this again. Now I'm gonna plug this in and as you can see, I've got a little thing on here. This is called a charger doctor. Adafruit makes them, um, they're available online. I was actually able to pick one up in my local Shell store. It's, uh, I'm in Sweden, so it's like our Radio Shack, uh, basically. Now, as we have it right now, we only have one port, which I hate with Apple devices, but that's, that's the way it is, I know. So in order to be able to connect more stuff, we need to add a little USB hub. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm gonna unplug this, connect the USB hub. Oh, this is gonna get so messy. Connect this here and connect this here. Why I'm doing this this way first is because I wanna see how many amps this thing is pulling. And if we look here, we can see that this thing is pulling about 20 milliamps. So that, now we know that that's another added power we're gonna have to calculate into this. Let me just add that this is actually a powered hub. So it delivers with a wall power adapter that will connect to this and then power the USB hub itself. But I don't wanna connect this because I want us to pull all of the power from the iPad. Because if I do this, if I start powering this hub, then look at the amp here now, we're pulling 20 milliamps. And now when I connect this, we're pulling no amps. That's the way it works. So if you have a powered hub, then your USB devices will be powered by the hub and not the iDevice itself. Now I'm gonna unplug this and it's gonna start pulling current again. There we go. So let's start connecting stuff again. Just gonna unplug this because I know that this one will just draw a bunch of power. So let's get it in there and we're up and running. So right now we're pulling how much? We're pulling about 60 milliamps uh, with the hub and the, you know, the Innovation Launch Key MK2. We're gonna pull more when we press down keys. Now we're pulling 80 milliamps. And so that's, that's always the thing we need to consider. How many lights do our things have? So we're gonna connect another thing here. This is the IK Multimedia iRig pads, right? So let's plug this in and it's gonna turn on. We got lights. We're pulling about 80 milliamps from the system and we're still good. Okay, so here's one thing. LED lights will draw power and the more you have, the more power it will draw. This can become an issue when you're doing stuff like I'm doing right here. Yeah, just keep watching. If I push down on buttons here, we're gonna see that, oh, suddenly I'm, I'm pulling way more. I'm pulling 150 milliamps now from the system. Now, we're gonna connect one more thing because we only have two MIDI devices connected and we want to connect an audio interface too. No connection error, 
this thing lights up. This is the Behringer UCA202. It's really great. It pulls almost no current, but right now we're about, let's see here. We're about 100 and, yeah, you can see we're still at 150 milliamps because this thing is drawing almost no power. I want to add that though, when you start running audio signals through here and you have a, a headphone connected to it and you pull up uh, the uh, volume for it, you're gonna start pulling more power the same way you're pulling more power as soon as you start lighting up buttons. And now I wanna show you what happens when we get close to the threshold. So. Now, when I recorded this, I didn't realize that my fingers were off camera. But what I'm actually doing is I'm pressing and holding down pads on the iRig pads controller. And so I'm also at the same time lighting up LEDs. I'm gonna push down one, two, three, four. Oh, look at that. We just died. It, no, we didn't die, but the connection died. As soon as I started lighting up more LEDs on this side, at, at 170 or 180 milliamps, the connection just died because the iPad cannot handle more. Okay, so if you're at this stage and you've done this and you get this connection error because you've been pulling too much power and you're thinking, okay, I'm just gonna unplug it and plug it again because I know it works. As long as I don't hold down any pads or light and LEDs, it should be able to run. Um, however, when I disconnect this and reconnect it, it won't start up the session. Uh, it's still gonna give me an error message. Why is that? Well, it's because of the Novation Launch Key MK2. Because as I said earlier, when it starts up, it goes through a startup cycle, it lights up the screen and the LEDs start flashing, which looks good, but it also means that it is pulling more power. And so the whole session is pulling so much power that iOS detects an overload and shuts off the connection. Now I can't know for certain, but I think iOS does this or Apple put this into iOS in order to protect the battery from draining too fast or maybe tampering or other kinds of issues, power related issues that is. So in order to get this to work properly, well, we're gonna have to power our USB hub. And that's what we're gonna do. So power it and everything lights up, do that. We're getting no connection errors. And if we look here, we're pulling no amps from our system. You also have to realize that you do wanna be able to press down buttons and stuff when you're using MIDI controllers, right? I mean, that's the point of them, but this is why I don't like controllers with LED lights, you know, working with iOS and a CCK. And this is why I prefer using the Lightning to USB 3 connector instead, because it actually houses a Lightning port so that you can charge your iDevice at the same time. And this actually makes it so iOS allows for a um, higher power. Uh, it will give you more power. I did a test with this. I used the same devices, the Launch Key MK2 from Novation, the iRig pads from IK Multimedia, and also the bearing a UCA202. I connected all of those units to the same USB hub. Again, it's not powered, so all of the power needs to come from the USB connection and from the iDevice itself. Now, since I'm using the Lightning to USB 3 connector, I've also got an Apple charger plugged into the Lightning port of the Lightning to USB 3 connector. Now, in this case, I was using a 12 watt adapter, and so it has a maximum power output of 2.4 amps, which is quite good. And with this setup, I tried lighting up as many LEDs as my hands could reach, and my power output got up to about between 280 to 300 milliamps before the connection died. And that's why I recommend that connector. And so there you have it. Now you know why you should be using a powered USB hub while using an older camera connection kit, the Apple CCK for iOS. And now you also know why I recommend that you use the Lightning to USB 3 connector instead. Not only will you be able to avoid connection errors like this, you'll also be prolonging the sessions that you can run because if everything is being powered by your iDevice battery, well, you're gonna run out of power pretty fast. Now, there are other things to talk about like uh, connection errors related to USB devices that are iOS incompatible. And of course, there's the connection order. 
So I'll just mention the order. Remember to connect everything to your actual CCK or Lightning to USB connector first before plugging it into the iDevice. It's the proper way of doing it. If you connect it the other way around and you connect the connector to the iDevice first and then plug in the USB, you might get connection errors even if the stuff that you're using is compatible with your iDevice. I almost forgot. iOS version updates can break these connections. So you might discover that after updating from an older iOS version to a newer one, like say from 10 to 11 or 11 to 12, you might get connection errors with setups you've had no problem running before. People come to my channel asking me this question all the time, could it be iOS doing it? And the answer is always yes. Yes, absolutely yes. Apple keeps breaking stuff with every update. This is why I wait several months before updating so that Apple can get their bleep together and roll out some iOS bug fixes. All of the links and names to all of the stuff that I've been featuring in this video can be found down inside the description box. Right, so I think I've been going on for too long. Now, if this video was helpful in some way, if you felt that this video gave you value, then hit that like button because it really, really helps uh, with the ratings here on YouTube. It's a great way of supporting me and what I do on this channel. Now, if you want to support me in a financial way, which I really, really appreciate, I do have a Patreon or is it Patreon or Patreon? Now, if you don't want to do the Patreon thing, then you can do the PayPal me. You can send me a few bucks over there like a somebody. I, I mean, uh, like a one time thing. And if you don't want to do that, then you can always buy some tracks that I've made uh, over at my Bandcamp. I will have music up on iTunes and Spotify and other uh, platforms, but I'm waiting with all of that until I'm done with my Mellow album. Don't forget to follow me on Instagram because I will start uh, live streaming there for the purpose of inviting viewers to come chat with me live. So follow me on Instagram. You'll find the link down in the description. I want to thank you all so much for watching. As usual, I wish you a very productive week. Now go finger all of your stuff and have a lot of fun doing it.